YouTube, it's your girl Jada Diamonds here, back with another video. And today I'm going to be doing a book haul for you guys. Um, elephant in the room, elephant in the room, yes, I know. I have been gone. Um, I think it's been, I don't know how many months since my last video, but I'm here. I've still been reading, like I said before, and I actually have a reading vlog. Um, that I'm also currently in um, the middle of. So, your girl's reading, you know, I'm just, it's been a lot of, um, my life has been very chaotic, um, to say the least. But all in all, I am very happy and my most happiest uh, pastime is when I'm reading. So, I've also been buying books. I have been buying books secondhand and I also have bought, bought books as a uh, participant in capitalism because you know some stuff i just cannot say no to so i'm here now to express myself um and show you guys what i'm about to be reading um the books that are going to be taking me into fall and i'm really really excited all right so without further ado let's just get straight into it um I'll start off with my later purchase or the ones like from like last month. So I was perusing through my favorite um, bookstore, as I said before, it's called my favorite secondhand bookstore. It's called um, the second edition. No, yeah, second editions. And yeah, so the first one I have here is White Teeth by, I read right here, White Teeth by uh, Zay Smith. Um, this book is by a British author by the name of Zay Smith. She is from Northwest London. She is, honestly, I don't know if she's mixed race or she's actually just black or light skin, but yeah, she's a prolific author. And this book won the 2000 White Bread First Novel Award, and it's her first novel. And she has since published, um, other works. But um, I've heard interesting things about this book. Some people love this book. Some people hate this book. All in all, I want to read it and decide for myself. And it was $3. And this was kind of beat up. It's cool. It's cool. I don't mind. I don't mind an old book. But it's cool. Um, let's talk about when it was first published. Uh, in 2000. Uh, this book was published in 2000. So let's read the um, let's read the blurb about it. So it says, a rich, ambitious, and often hilarious delight. A, ro a rollicking, thundering, good-natured, ironic blast of a debut. A story that bowls along on an energy so... No, this is not it. Here we go. Where is the blurb? Where is the blurb? White tea. See, I can't stand these editions that were published um, after because it has so much praise. I don't know what the blurb is. All right, so let's just read this part. One of the most talked about fictional debuts of recent years. White Teeth is a funny, generous, big-hearted novel adored by critics and readers alike, dealing, among many other things, with friendship, love, war, three cultures and three families over three generations, one brown mouse, and the tricky way the past has of coming back and biting you on the ankle. It is a life-affirming, roidious, must-read of a book. So we'll see. Um, I know nothing about White Teeth. I just heard that it like goes in, weaves in and out of um, different years, telling the story. I think there's like one particular um, thing that each of these families have that's alike. And so that she's taking and using like different time spans, like maybe 1999 and then it flips back to 1960 and then it goes forward to 2005 or whatever. I'm just guessing. But yeah, so anyway, White Teeth. I'm excited about White Teeth. Um, and then I have, um, I have Marcel Proust's, um, Remembrance of Things Past. Um, 
So the reason why it's called my additions that I have were translated as remembrance of things past. Newer translated fiction, these are French, these are translated from the French to the English. Newer translations are called um, not remembrance of things past, but in search of lost time. Um, but all in all, they're the same. It's how it's just how the translator decided to translate the works. So Marcel Proust. Um, this is actually one complete novel broken into one, two, three, four, five, six books. Um, um, but I only have five. So I found myself very, very lucky. In second edition, I found these beautiful and whoever, whoever this person is, they loved these books because they put their name on them as the owner of them. It says R. Strodus struderous or something like that but these were his books and the only problem is i do not have the first one which is swan's way so i actually went to ebay and um i'm sorry i gotta go i actually went to ebay to find a vintage book it's called a vintage book and they were published in 1970 i went to ebay to try to get or see if they had this exact edition of Swan's Way, and they do. And the person wants $50 for it when I pay for each of these books $2. But anyway, this is Marcel Proust's In Search of Lost Time or Remembrance of Things Past. And I have The Captive, Within a Budding Grove, Cities of the Plain, The Past Recaptured, and the sweet cheat gone. Um, so Swan's Way is the first one. Within a Budding Grove is the second. Oh, I don't have Germanta's Way. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I'm missing two. I don't have Germanta's Way. Um, Cities of the Plain, The Captive, The Sweet Cheat Gone, and The Past Recaptured. So all in all, these are actually one great epic novel. Um, but they're broken into volumes. And so I have five of the seven volumes, but I will not read these until I got or till I get Swan's Way first. Um, and I might get Swan's Way as In Search of Lost Time. And then I'll start reading these. But I've heard from different people and also watching booktube. One of my favorite booktubers right now is Elena Estelle. And she recently did a review of um, Swan's Way. And she loves Swan's Way. Um, so for me, I probably will, and it's a lot of words on the page. I probably will get a newer version of Swan's Way and read Swan's Way first. And, um, and then I'll go and tackle these. So all in all, this is probably considered one of the greatest novels of all time. And it is Swan's recount of falling in love with, or dealing with, or dating women in the act of dealing, or the act of pursuing a woman, or just, you know, just the beauty of being young and in love and searching for and finding, um, I guess, peace within other people. I don't know, but I want to know. So that's why I have the books. Alright. Good. Next, next, next. Next, I have this beautiful edition. It is a fourth estate matchbox edition of Jonathan Franzen's The Corrections. And I'm really excited about that. I love the floppiness of this book. You can tell it has never been read because the spine is not broken. Um, and it was the same. I also got my Neapolitan novels from this store last year. Um, none of them had been opened. None of them had been read before because the spine wasn't broken on them. But uh, since I've been reading them, I have definitely crinkled the spine of this one and of my brilliant friend. But those who leave and those who stay in the story of a new name, brand new. Brand new. Just like this book. And so Jonathan Franzen, I paid three dollars for this, a second edition, and this 
Jonathan Franzen is a well-known author, well-to-do author. He has published since, I think he's published like, let's see. I think he's published like seven books. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's published eight books and he has translated two. All right. But above his fiction, I think the, the Corrections is like his most loved and most, this book Apparently, this book is the book that made everyone look at Jonathan Franzen and say, this is an amazing author. But before this, he did Freedom, I think. So, Purity, Freedom, Strong Emotion, The 27th City. But everyone is now, this is the one they were talking about. And now, since this, he has uh, published the one about the family, Crossroads. So if I find Crossroads, I'm gonna definitely get Crossroads, but I have The Corrections by Jonathan Franzen, and I think I want to, um, I think I wanna read The Corrections in October, I think October, because I have a really huge plan for November. But The Corrections, let's read the blurb. After 50 years as a wife and mother, Enid Lambert is ready to have some fun. Unfortunately, her husband Alfred is losing his sanity and their children have long since fled for the catastrophes of their own lives. As Alfred's condition worsens and the Lamberts are forced to face their, their secrets and failures, Annette sets her heart on one last family Christmas. Bringing the old world of civic virtue and sexual inhibition into violent collisions with the era of hands-off parenting, do-it-yourself mental health care, and globish greed, the corrections established Jonathan Franzen as one of the most brilliant interpreters of the American soul. Hmm? So I think he does family well, because the crossroads is about family also. So I'm excited. And so there's a ship here, so I'm thinking that they're going to take like a cruise for Christmas maybe, you know, sometimes people do that. So I'm excited about the corrections and I feel so lucky that I actually found this Matchbox edition. These books are like 40 bucks. Um, yeah, and this has euros on it. So this came from overseas. But for, if you wanna get one of these now, they're like $40. So I'm happy about that. And another book that I purchased, I purchased this book when I purchased White Teeth, but I also, I had started reading it is um, I've actually started reading it and this is that this is the Barnes and Nobles classics and this is the idiot it's really pretty right it's a really pretty book and this is the idiot by Fyodor Dost by Fyodor Dostoevsky and I made a I made a, my way through um this book is extremely accessible and it's very much readable and it's already like becoming one of my favorite books of all time um i love this book like i could I honestly couldn't put it down this is one day of reading and i made it to page 113 and so this one is translated by constance garnett and if you don't know about the idiot the idiot is about a story of a prince a lost prince who was sent off to um he was in russia he was sent somewhere else because he was losing his mind but in all actuality that's not what the case is i actually have to like remember what it was but he's not an he's not actually an idiot um but I, let me just read it real quick so in this masterpiece the idiot dostoevsky portrays a truly beautiful soul truly a character he found difficult to bring to life because as he wrote beauty is the ideal and neither my country nor civilized europe um know what that ideal of beauty is the result was one of dostoevsky's greatest creations prince mishkin a saintly christ-like yet deeply human figure the story begins with mishkin arrive with when mishkin arrives on Russian soil after a stay in a Swiss sanatorium, scorned by St. Petersburg society as an idiot for his generosity and innocence. Yes, so that's what makes him dumb. It's like a play on words, if you will. For his generosity and innocence, the prince finds himself at the center of a struggle between a rich, kept woman and a beautiful, virtuous girl who both hope to win his affection. Unfortunately, Michigan's very goodness seems to bring disaster to all he meets, leading to a shocking de 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 
um, that tragically reveals how in a world obsessed with money, power, and sexual conquest, a sanatorium is the only place for a saint. So I basically feel like, um, I don't know how, I think I know how it's gonna end. He's probably gonna have to go back to the sanitarium, but all in all, like I said, the translator translated this book or if anything, Dostoevsky himself, even though this was written in 18, hold on. This was written, I think the idiot, the possessed, the idiot was written in 1868. It was published in 1868. It's, it's very much like today. Um, it's giving very much 2022, as far as the commentary, the, the prose, um, the ideas that are presented in this book, the themes that are here, it makes you just realize that human nature will never ever cease to like change. And so, yeah, I'm going to pick this back up around November because I wanted to give it my full, this is the type of book to me that needs my full attention. Um, even though I can carry a storyline and I'm a slowish reader, if you will, I read, I read kind of slow because I want to take in everything that the book is giving me and I want to and that's how I'm able to remember books um books and authors and everything like that because I don't rush through fiction I don't rush through I think that's beauty and power in sitting with a book for a, a while um but yeah I love this and I actually got this I bought this when I bought um white teeth all right so all right, so another book that I have is Gilead. I got Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. All of the literary girls have been talking about Marilyn Robinson, and I'm also on the lookout for housekeeping. And so this is published by Picador Books. Picador Books, I have a few books here that are published by Picador. Um, I have, yeah, I have a few books here published by Picador Books. But anyway, let's go ahead and read what Gilead All right, so yeah, like I said, let's go ahead. I don't know. I think that's better. Let's go ahead and read what Gilead is about. Marilyn Roberts returns with a story about fathers and sons and the spiritual battles that still rage in America's heart. In the luminous and unforgettable voice of Congressionalist Minister John Ames, Gilead reveals the human condition and manages to convey the miracle of existence itself. That's all it has here. So, okay, it's so about a father and a son. It's a national bestseller and it won the Pulitzer Prize. It gotta be good. And this looks like a one sitting type of book cause I'm knocking down 500 pages of books right now. And so if I could get something, this is 247 pages. I don't know when I picked this up, but I had to get it because the literary girlies are telling me that I need to get this. So I got it. Um. Next, we have another book that I am so excited for. I am so excited for this book. It's Milkman by Anna Burns. <laughs> Milkman won the 2018 Man Booker Prize. And it's just so funny that I came across this book the same day that I watched um, Elena Estelle's review of this book. And Elena Estelle already it became on my radar because of Elena Estelle and this once again is a new book and I paid three dollars for it it never has even been cracked open and so that's like oh my god this is for me so this book is about a girl an unnamed narrator um who goes by little sister yeah so here it goes in an unnamed city middle sister not little sister but middle sister in an unnamed city middle sister stands out for the wrong reasons she reads while walking for one and she has been taking french night classes downtown so when a local parliamentary known as the milkman begins pursuing her she suddenly becomes interesting the last thing she ever wanted to be Despite middle sister's attempt to avoid him and to keep her mother from finding out about her maybe boyfriend, rumors spread and the threat of violence lingers. 
Milkman is a story of the way inaction can have enormous repercussions in a time when the wrong flag, wrong religion, or even a sunset can be subversive. Tope with ferocious energy and sly, wicked humor, Milkman establishes Anna Burns as one of the most consequential voices of our day. I'm really excited about this. And look at this cover. This cover is stunning. Stunning. It's 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 stunning. So yeah. I'm excited. Mm. Alright, next we have Severance. We have Severance. these are not so the the next few books are actually they were purchased retail. This was a gift. This actually was a gift to me. Thank you, thank you. Um so this book is called Severance by Ling Mai. It's also a Picador book. Um, Gilead was a Picador book. So Picador does a really good job of choosing authors that I think may be like ring true to like the nature of that publishing house. So Severance, if anything, I, I think it's a dystopian novel centered around working during a pandemic. Um, I don't know if it's ne necessarily pandemic -y, but I know it's satirical. Um, it's a satiric novel. Um, yeah, working during a pandemic. I feel like that's exactly what it is. <laughs> and like my, I'm really interested in like Asian authors right now. And I'm really almost about to purchase um sayaka Murata's convenience store woman earthlings um also i want to get the um what is it i can't think of it right now but yeah i'm just really interested in books written and published by asian women um she's an asian american and yeah there's no blurb but basically yeah that's why i think this but i have no idea what this book is about but it's severance it's Severance by Ling Mai, and I'm excited. So it says here, stunning and audacious with a fresh take on both office politics and what the apocalypse might bring. See, I was almost there. I except I said a um, what did I say? I said a pandemic, but it says apocalypse. So shit, maybe World War Z, maybe. But all right, next we have, this was from, um, I got this book back in May. Um, it was also a gift. Um, anyways, it's called Intimacies by Katie Kitamara. And who put this book on my radar is Grace um, from London. She's one of my favorite booktubers also. I love her channel. I don't know how her channel, channel came across. Y'all know how YouTube does. But anyway, the way she described this book, made me want to get it and so it's a quiet novel kind of literary ficky and uh yeah this is also by an asian um an asian woman all right so this one has a blurb an interpreter has come to the hague to escape new york and work at the international court a woman of many languages and identities she's looking for a place of She's looking for a place to finally call home. She's drawn into simmering personal dramas. Her lover, Adrian, is separated from his wife, but still entangled in his marriage. Her friend, Jana, witnesses a seemingly random act of violence, a crime the interpreter becomes increasingly obsessed with as she befriends the victim's sister. And she's pulled into an explosive po political controversy when she's asked to interpret for a former president accused of war crimes. A woman of quiet passion, she confronts power, love, and violence, both in her personal intimacies and in her work at the court. She is soon punished, sorry, no, she is soon pushed to precipice where betrayal and heartbreak threaten to overwhelm her, forcing her to decide what she wants for her life. So yeah, this book was really expensive. This book was $26. And honestly, it's because it's hardcover. I don't even like hardcover books, but when I saw it, look at her, she's so pretty. But when I saw it, I said, oh, intimacies. And um, it's pretty. And so. All right, let's go to the next book. 
um, this next book I'm honestly really excited for. I don't know if it won, it won the, I have another book that won the Man Booker. Um, but I don't know if it won the Man Booker because she was getting old or what. But this is an Alice Monroe. Alice Monroe is a prolific short story author. Um, they say no one does short story like her. Um, and so, yeah, so this is a book of short stories and I'm really, 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 really excited. I think it's 10 short stories. Uh, let's see. It's called Too Much Happiness. Um, I think I checked out Runaway from the library, but, um, I didn't get to it. So I took it back, but Runaway was actually, um, a recommendation from Rebecca over at Rebecca Eats Books. So I did check it out, but I just didn't get to it. Um, and honestly, it's time for me to actually go on another library haul. I don't have any library books right now. Um, I'm hoping to get a Kindle for Christmas so I can do some, some reading like that on the Kindle. So I can try out some of Avari McFarlane's romance. That's what I want to read on my Kindle. I want to check out romance books. So I'm, so I'm so excited for the winter and what the winter brings. But let's count how many, let's count how many short stories are here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Yeah, it's ten. It's ten. Um, and so yeah, it's a book of short stories, like I said, by Alice Monroe, and it's called Too Much Happiness. And everybody raves about Alice Monroe. And I'm just excited. So let's go ahead and read the blurb. Uh, 10 superb new stories by one of our most beloved and admired writers, the winner of the 2009 Man Booker International Prize. In the first story, a young wife and mother receives, receives release from the unbearable pain of losing her three children from a most surprising source. In another, a young woman in the aftermath of an unusual and humiliating sedu seduction reacts in a clever, if less than admirable fashion. Other stories uncover the deep holes in a marriage, the unsuspected cruelty of children, and how a boy's disfigured face provides both the good things in life and the bad. And in the long title story, we accompany Sofia Ko Kovaleski, a late 19th century Russian emerge and mathematician on a writer journey that takes her from the Riviera, where she visits her lover, to Paris, Germany, and Denmark, where she has a fateful meeting with the local doctor, and finally to Sweden, where she teaches at the only university in Europe willing to employ a female mathematician. With clarity and ease, Alice Monroe once again renders complex difficulty, events, and emotions into in, into emotions into stories that shed light on the unpredictable ways in which men and women accommodate and often transcend what happens in their lives. Too Much Happiness is a compelling, provocative, even daring collection. It's exciting. Right now, more than ever, I'm intrigued and interested in examining books that detail um, the inner workings of women in men's mind and like the human condition as a whole and character studies and just like understanding like how other people possibly live their lives because a lot of times people assume that fiction isn't real we can say fiction isn't real fiction isn't real it's, it's made up stories of things that actually do occur in life and so that's just what i'm just more more, more so interested in things that I can imagine that could possibly happen to me in my life or ways that I can educate myself um, because there's nothing, nothing's going on right now but real fakeness. So I'm just, my retreat to books is just like, it, it came at a perfect time. Now I have two other books. I'm really excited about this. These, this honestly is a book haul, but it's also my TBR. For, I'm reading all of these books this winter, this fall, winter, this rest of the summer, the rest of the fall and the winter. These are the books that I will be reading. And I have more bookshelves that I need to put up so I can hold these books. But this next book comes as no surprise. Hold on. I never, hold on. I never wrapped up, um, 
I never wrapped up the idiot and I don't know when I will. I got really far. Yeah, I finished the idiot. Okay. So this next book is the sequel to the idiot. And it's a little bit bigger too. Let's see. This is a bigger one. Um, and I know you're probably like, how did you get a paperback? They don't release the paperback until a year later. The Idiot came out in May. And I do have a paperback. And I got my paperback because I, like I said, I have been watching my favorite YouTuber of all time right now, uh, Elena Estelle. And she's just telling me about Blackwells in the UK and how Blackwells has, um, paperback editions when they're first published so i did a blackwell's order duh and i got the paperback because i do not like hardback books the only reason why alice monroe's book is hardback is because i got it second hand and it was like i said this is a 30 dollar book and i got it for three dollars brand new and intimacies was a gift but either or or either or is the second installment of our the idiot it is going to finish up or excuse me not finish up but it's following the story of uh Selin um uh or Selin um which is a she is a um she was a freshman at Harvard here in this book and this book is so laugh out loud funny and it also is a play on the um Theodore Dostoevsky is the idiot is a play on that because if you follow the author Alif Batuman she is a lover of Russian literature uh, her first novel called The Possessed is also based off Fyodor, one of Fyodor Dostoevsky's books so then she decided to do another one but here she's not a Christ-like figure but she is kind of young and dumb and it just details like the things that she is so ignorant to as an 18 year old fresh from home and into a world of academia she doesn't even know what she even wants to study in college um she doesn't even understand the energy that she's receiving from this guy and like kind of like you know like when you start liking a guy as a young person as a child you're thinking one way and not even understanding that the guy is seemingly liking you but all in all he has a girlfriend and all these things you know so anyway this book is just about a lot of stuff and it's very interesting and very fun and very funny and it rings true to the ideas of a young person just entering college because I was there once before twice you know but this is the second edition of the novels regarding Celine and this is her I don't know second year college sophomore year or junior year um I really like how big this is but this is her yeah this is 19 okay so this is 19 it says so it starts off part one part one September 1996 and so this is I think 1995 I don't know. It's like, yeah, 19, it's like 95. But anyway, sophomore year. And let's read about what it's going to be about. And I'm so glad I got this one. I got this one before anything else happens because this one was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize. So I got the cover where there's nothing on it, front or back, just we got the blurb on the back. So here it says, Celine is the luckiest person in her family, the only one who was born in America and got to go to Harvard. Now it's sophomore year in 1996 and Celine knows she has to make it count. The first order of business to figure out the meaning of everything that happened over the summer. Why did Celine's elusive crush, Ivan, find her that job in the Hungarian countryside? What was up with all those other people in the Hungarian countryside? What is Ivan's ex-girlfriend now trying to get in touch 
what was up with all those other people in the Hungarian countryside? Why is Ivan's ex-girlfriend now trying to get in touch with her, with her? On the plus side, it feels like the plot of an existing novel. On the other hand, why do so many novels have crazy abandoned women in them? How does one live a life as interesting as a novel, a life worthy of becoming a novel without becoming a crazy abandoned woman oneself? Guided by her literature syllabus and by her more worldly and confident peers, Celine reaches certain conclusions about the universal importance of parties, alcohol, and sex, and resolves to execute them in practice, no matter what the cost. Next on the list, international travel. Unfolding with the, um, unfolding with the propulsive logic and intensity of youth, Either Or is a landmark novel by one of our most brilliant writers. Hilarious, revelatory, and unforgettable, its gripping narrative will confront you with searching questions that persist long after the last page because there also is going to be one more. Except the last one is going to be uh, her in her 30s. And I only know this because I'm a freak and I go and I find um after obsessing over a novel i go and find interviews of the author and that's how we found out that there was going to be another book and then that's how we know it's going to be one more book and she's going to be post-grad like living her life in her 30s and which is awesome because i'm 30 now so i can't wait till that comes out probably come out let's see the idiot was this was a 2017 and then either or came out in 2022 this year so we'll probably will get after a few years um yeah 2017 so let's see all right so i'll probably be 35 when the other one comes out all right and now we have our final book of the haul I'm so excited. Hold on. Uh, you had to know. You had to know that I was going to be getting Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Melores. It's not Melores, it's Coco Millers. Um, and it's these are these are like the same size. I got both of these from Black Wells uh, in London, um, from the UK, um, and this is also a Fourth Estate book. You know that Jonathan Friends and Matchbox edition was a Fourth Estate book, so they it's a really beautiful book. Um, oh, and this is the um, smart receipt, my packing receipt. Anyways, so we have Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Millers. And this is a debut novel by, this is Coco Mills' first book. Look at the colors, look at the print. Look at the picture, so pretty. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Anyway, um, let's read what it's about. All right, so New York is slipping from Cleo's grasp. Sure, she's a different party. Sure, she's at a different party every night but she barely knows anyone. Then she meets Frank, 20 years older. Frank's life is full of all the success and excess that Cleo's lacks. He offers her the chance to be happy and the opportunity to apply for a green card. She offers him a life embowed with beauty and art and hopefully a reason to cut back on his drinking. They are everything each other needs right now. Cleo and Frank run headfirst into a romance that neither of them can quite keep up with. That reshapes their lives and the lives of those around them, whether that's Cleo's, um, sorry, whether that's Cleo's best friend struggling to embrace his gender identity in the wake of her marriage or Frank's financially dependent sister arranging sugar daddy dates after being cut off. Cleopatra and Frankenstein is an astounding and painfully relatable debut novel about the spontaneous decisions that shape our entire lives and those imperfect relationships born of unexpectedly perfect evenings. Bitch. This is another one I, I don't want to touch it because I know it's 370 pages. I don't want to touch this because I know if I do, I'm not going to want to put this one down. So this one... And this one, we might be saving these girlies for my Christmas break. Um, and I think 
this one is probably going to be for November along with um, finishing up the idiot. And then I think we'll do the corrections in October along with severance maybe. I don't know. And then we'll just throw Gilead and Intimacies in there somewhere because they're really cute short books. And I think I'll probably start the short story soon because um and this is gonna go down here i'll start the short stories soon because they're short stories you know and the short stories are probably 50 pages each or something like that and so yeah but anyways i hope you guys enjoy this book haul i'm really excited to be back um i'm actually gonna go try to edit this right now and get it uploaded today and be looking out for my um finishing up i'm finishing up um the story of a new name now and that that vlog will be up as soon as i'm done i'm literally wrapping up the last 100 pages so yeah so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this i'm enjoying it i'm back i'm so excited and i'll see you guys in my next upload